what's up everybody? Welcome back to Macabre Gorium Labs presents the School of Boredom, a showcase of things likely forgotten. My name is Mr. Bats and I'll be your guide today as we explore Lesson 104, Dan Verses. Dan vs. is a Flash animated television series created by Dan Mandel and Chris Pearson. It originally aired on the Hub Network and was distributed by Stars Media. It aired from January 1, 2011 until March 9, 2013. In total, there were three seasons consisting of 53 episodes. The Hub Network launched on October 10, 2010 and ended on October 13, 2014. It was replaced by Discovery Kids. This show has three main characters, Dan, Chris, and Elise. There are a whole bunch of side characters that help shape the show, but they are not consistently in every episode. The main character, Dan, is unemployed and very cynical toward life, although it is safe to say he has a soft spot for animals. Dan himself is voiced by a man named Curtis Armstrong. You may have seen him in the Revenge of the Nerds movies, or know his voice as Snot in the Fox animation series American Dad. He also had a decent run as Robot from the Nickelodeon show Robot and Monster. Dan is very temperamental and has anger issues that usually come into play when he sees an injustice or feels that someone has wronged him. Sometimes the things that set him off are actually the wrongdoing of others, and sometimes it's just Dan being Dan. He was born on Halloween of 1985, and he currently lives in a rundown apartment in North Hollywood, California. He's usually seen wearing blue jeans, black shoes, and a t-shirt that says jerk on it. He also has black hair, green eyes, and a soul patch. He's short and unkempt and messy, among his other issues, he's also lactose intolerant, and this comes up in many episodes, as his stomach cramps him regularly. Growing up, Dan had to deal with a pretty rough childhood, and as a result, he's easily angered, short-tempered, and impatient. When someone has wronged him, he feels forced to take revenge, however his revenge attempts never turn out as they're supposed to as they are usually outlandish schemes. His revenge schemes are kind of an eye for an eye type of revenge, like small children would do. They get him kicked out of places regularly and he has been tear gassed so many times he doesn't even notice, and has been maced so many times that he says it's tangier than tear gas. You. <laughs> I've been tear gassed so many times I don't even notice anymore. Now, every good scheme needs a cohort, and for Dan, this cohort is Chris. Dan and Chris met at summer camp when they were younger. Chris saved Dan from being William Tell to buy some older camp bullies. William Tell is a game where one person tries to shoot an apple off the head of someone else without hurting them using a bow and arrow. At the summer camp, their friendship was further cemented when Chris helped Dan get revenge against the abusive camp counselor, Mr. Tedesco. Chris is Dan's sidekick and the complete opposite of Dan. Chris is also a pushover, making him extremely easy to be manipulated by Dan. Chris himself is voiced by a Canadian comedy actor named Dave Foley, whom some of you might remember from a show called Kids in the Hall or the voice from Flick from Disney's A Bug's Life. He usually drives Dan around and funds Dan's revenge plans. He has an uncontrollable hunger and is often thwarted from eating by, you guessed it, Dan. Chris's look is a blue t-shirt, an orange overshirt, cargo pants, and white socks with brown flip-flops. He also sleepwalks and eats during his nightly journeys. Chris works for a temp agency, which makes him usually available for Dan's schemes. There are also many instances where Dan and Chris's relationship has been a little bit rocky and they have been at odds with each other. For instance, there's an episode where Chris wins a prop from a sci-fi movie and Dan believes that he should be the one to own it. So Dan tries this elaborate way to take it from Chris. In addition to Dan, Chris has a problem saying no to his wife Elise. Most commonly, Elise is wearing a white t-shirt with red trim 
blue hip huggers, and red shoes, although we do see her in ninja outfits or other covert attire. The talents of Paget Brewster bring Elise to life. You may know her as Jamie Eckleberry in Two and a Half Men, and she has lent her voice to many, many characters in cartoons such as Bird Girl slash Judy Ken Seven on the Cartoon Network Adult Swim show, Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. Elise is usually calm unless Dan is going to cause any physical harm to Chris. Dan's revenge schemes always irritate her. However, she continues to let Chris be involved. Elise works for some covert government agency and is always out on super secret missions. Sometimes the missions cause her to help Dan, as his revenge plan will serve her purposes too, or at least keep Chris busy while she works. Elise and Dan have a very complicated relationship, sort of a the enemy of my enemy is my friend vibe. They are always fighting and arguing with each other, but do have rare moments when they get along. Are you at the hospital? Of course! What have I been saying this whole time? I'll be there in five minutes. And I am not happy! Although any of Dan's plans that could result in any way of Chris getting hurt are very fast to incur the rage and wrath of Elise. During one episode, they are trapped together in a blizzard, which did bond them as uneasy friends. Dan, I promise that if I survive, I will come back with help. Maybe. And I promise if I survive, I'll lobotomize you. So last of all, and one of the best, not to mention cast favorite around here characters, is Mr. Mumbles. In season one, episode five, Dan versus the animal shelter. Dan is trying to get the animal shelter across the street from his apartment closed as the animals bark and make noise all night long. Many hijinks ensue, and right before Dan blows up the animal shelter, he meets a cat. That cat is Mr. Mumbles, a small, fluffy, white and gray cat. Dan initially thought Mr. Mumbles to be a male cat, but found out later it was a female. However, the name stayed. Throughout the show, it is mentioned multiple times that Mr. Mumbles looks mangy, but Dan will tell you firsthand that that is simply because she does not know how to lick herself. Dan absolutely loves Mr. Mumbles and is often calmed by her presence. She has helped him with revenge schemes by sporting a little ski mask or cape as needed. Dan also seems to be able to understand her meows, have conversations with her, including discussing his schemes. Mr. Mumbles, have you seen my gas mask anywhere? Meow. Mr. Mumbles is sweet and attached to Dan, but will scratch the heck out of Dan or freak out when scared. She is an intelligent cat, which helps her stay out of harm's way when helping Dan. Although she does like Elise, Mr. Mumbles does not like Chris and will bite and scratch him whenever possible. There are, of course, many side characters in this series, including Elise's parents and younger brother, Crunchy, and the sheriff, just to name a few. Another side character is Hortons. She is Dan's love interest for a while, but ends up marrying someone else. Some of Dan's best schemes are introduced in episodes like Dan versus Canada. Dan versus traffic. Dan versus the Wolfman. Dan versus monster under the bed. Dan versus New Mexico. Dan versus the DMV. And one of the most funny Dan versus Dan versus Chris. Well, that's about all the time we have today for Dan Versus. It was a great show that turned out to be highly underrated in our opinion. We have all had an issue or day where we wish we could take revenge on an undue situation. This is what makes Dan Versus a funny cartoon. So check it out for yourselves. I'm sure you will love it too. Well, that's about all the time we had for this lesson. Thank you for joining us at Macabregorium Labs Presents School of Boredom. Lesson number 104, Dan Versus. 
If you liked it, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll see lesson number 105, Mad Balls, the grossest toy of the 1980s. I've been your guide, Mr. Bats, and we will see you next time. As usual, think for yourselves and keep it creepy. Please don't forget to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can see all of our new content as soon as it comes out. It is my destiny to one day become Shogun. Anything is possible when you divide by K5.